for me, and then went straight to business school. And the girl who literally needed hypnotherapy for math anxiety and taking tests, somehow managed to get through two economic classes, two accounting classes, two finance classes, two statistic classes. I studied my butt off, and embarrassingly, I'll share that sometimes I cheated. I felt desperate to get by and to make this work. So I wound up um, about third semester in getting my passion sparked. I was sitting, uh, listening to Professor Schuster talk about management development. And suddenly a light bulb went off for me. Wow, management development. You mean I can actually be in an organization and work with people and help them grow and develop as people? That excited me. And that's really when I got the idea to move into human resources. So I did the responsible, respectable thing. I graduated college. And then I got married at age 21 to my lovely husband, Ron, who's from Israel and needed a green card. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I had two wonderful children. I got my master's degree in counseling for business. Dun, 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 dun. I started working in human resources and about 13 years ago started my own personal and professional development practice. A big part of my work as a coach and a facilitator and speaker is to help people reconnect to their passions and their dreams. And this really held a lot of meaning for me because at that time I felt like my dream was of performing and self-expressing in that way it was dead. I dreamed a dream of days gone by When hope was high and life was living I dreamed that love would never die I dreamed that God would be then I was young and unafraid, and dreams were made and used and wasted. There was no ransom to be paid, no song unsung, no wine untasted. The tide has come at night with their voices soft as thunder as they tear your hopes apart, as they turn your dreams to shame. Presented 10 different record labels, and nobody had a clue that I sang. And everything looked so perfect from the outside, the pictures looked great. But anytime I would go to a show, 
like Les Mis, I would start to cry, imagining myself on that stage. What, what could have been for me? So about nine years ago, I was on my way to facilitate a work-life balance workshop in Long Beach. And my life was feeling anything but balanced. And I was running late. And I was sitting in my car and trying to relax. And I decided to put on a CD of Latin music. And a good song came on. I started to relax a little bit and to groove. And the traffic started to flow. Maybe I'd make it to my presentation after all in time. And as I continued to drive, suddenly I screeched on the brakes and whoa, I, I almost hit the car in front. Bam! Oh, the car, the car behind me just propelled into my car, which forced me to then go into the car in front of me. And now suddenly my white super mom minivan looked like an accordion and I needed to somehow maneuver my way over from the fast lane to the right hand shoulder. And as I pressed on the gas, nothing much was happening. And there was smoke coming out of my car and slowly I started to move my way over. As I, know, as I was moving, I felt that I had, oh, ouch, that scalding hot tea had poured all over my leg. And somehow, I made it to the side of the road. At that point, my professional kicked in, and I got information from the different drivers, I called the tow truck company, I called my insurance company, I spoke to the police, and then finally, oh, and I called the person I was supposed to present to and say, sorry, I'm not going to be making it. And then finally, when I did get in my car and waited for the tow truck, I started to shake. And I called my husband, and I started to cry, and I started to feel my neck. I wound up going to physical therapy to help with the pain I was feeling from the accident. This turned out to be a real good kickstart for me to get back in shape and to take better care of myself. And while I was at the physical therapist, I happened to see a flyer for a workshop called The Joy of Singing. The Joy of Singing? What the hell is that? <laughs> Turns out that one of the uh, patients of my physical therapist, uh, Warren Lyons, who unfortunately just recently passed, was the creator of this workshop. And the whole point of the workshop was all about facing your fears through singing, which culminated over just a few days into a performance. And I decided to follow my gut, and I said, you know what, I'm going to take this workshop. And I went very quickly from the first night sheepishly singing, somewhere over the rainbow, within days, singing a very challenging Stephen Sondheim song called The Miller's Son in front of hundreds of people, including my mom and my daughter. And I still see my mom standing for an ovation at the end of my song. It's still very touching to me. So once I completed that workshop, that reconnected me to the idea of really owning, hey, I am a performer. And if somebody were to ask me, Are you, do you sing? I would now emphatically say, yes. Where I used to say, well, I like to sing, but I haven't done it for years. And I kept that momentum going and quickly took headshots, started to audition for uh, theater, but I quickly realized that there was no way I could juggle having my own business, having my kids, and everything else that was going on. And I was really scared, how am I gonna keep this going? And it was at that point I went to a, a vocal teacher and I had showed her a videotape of my performance from The Joy of Singing, and she said to me, what are you doing? You're a performer, you need to be performing. And she said, have you ever heard of parlor singing? 
and I didn't know what that meant. Eventually, what I did was I started producing cabaret shows. And I started putting on my own shows and inviting other singers as well to perform and would put on an evening of entertainment. Uh, I wound up to date doing four of these shows, three of which were in a nightclub 